Hi guys, this is Shayna from UniYarns.com and we're back today with part two of our uh, I cord everything <laughs> you can possibly imagine tutorials. Um, we're working with the hashtag cozy blanket pattern, but we're turning it into a washcloth. So if you wanted to knit along with us, um, it's kind of a never ending knit along so there's no dates, but you'll need two different colors of cotton um, for washcloths, not mercerized. And um, I think I'm using a size six needle on, it's basically like a DK weight cotton yarn. Uh, I'll link part one below in the description for you so that you can kind of jump in and learn how to do all the cast on edges and everything because it has a lot of I-cord around the edge. So you learn all the techniques. We've got my preferred I-cord cast on is in that video. We talk a little bit about the difference between the two types of I-cord cast on, um, how to set it up to work an applied I-cord edging and how to make that edging a mirrored I-cord edging. Uh, we also discussed how to make these elongated I-cord edge stitches, which you'll need because the pattern is a mosaic knit in stockinette. Um, so you have basically four rows here for every one row here. So the elongated I-cord is really important to know how to do. And now today, we are going to learn how to do the bind off and what you do to finish off the secondary color and all of that fun. So without further ado, let's get started. And the pattern and the tutorial links and tips and everything for all the i cord stuff is at yumiyarns.com and I'll put the link below in the description for that as well. So in the last video, um, I left us with kind of this weird um, mistake that I made as we went. Um, I did an extra I-cord edge row here instead of just continuing over. So this side is a little bit longer than this side. And I just wanted to show you how to fix that if you end up doing the same thing. So the last row I knit was in the main color. And you can tell that because if you look at the back side of your work, you have your two colors both attached. But this one, the white one, is further down than the teal one, so my main color. That's connected to a stitch that's higher up than this one. You can see how this uh, main color is coming across here. That means this is the color that we used last. So we are on a row where we will use this, our contrast color. So we're going to slip these four edge stitches all together. And you can do them all together or one at a time, whichever you prefer. And I'm not <laughs> following my own pattern for this because I messed up because I wasn't looking at the pattern when I was doing the video before. So I'm just gonna stick with our established <laughs> pattern that I kind of accidentally made up as we were going on the last video. Um, so for mosaic knitting, you only use one color at a time, even though it's a color work. And for the actual washcloth, you won't have these vertical stripes like this, but that's what we're getting because that's kind of the patterning that I'm doing at the moment. And we're going to slip these two because those two are just the regular stitches. But then these are our edge stitches. Notice I'm keeping the um, contrast color to the back of the work as I'm slipping these. See how it's got that double wrap there from the elongated stitch? We're just gonna slide it off so we only have one, one wrap on the needle. There's two, three, and four edge stitches. And that's just our tail. We can cut that off because it's already woven in. And you can see how to do that on the last video also, on the first video, I guess. <laughs> so now we're gonna turn our work, keeping our yarn to the back, and since we're not working these stitches, these edge stitches, we're just gonna slip those again. Same thing with these first two stitches. And we're just gonna purl across here. And we're going to slip those ones, always keeping the work or the um, working yarn, yep, oops, to the back of your work. 
if you're doing a um, garter stitch mosaic, which a lot of them, like if you look at any of the um, pressed flowers type patterns, those are mosaic in uh, garter stitch fabric. Um, that, if you're doing that, it's just like normal garter stitch, you'd hold the working yarn to the front of the work when you're working across the back side. But since we want it to look like stockinette stitch, we're keeping the working yarn to the back side, or so to, to the wrong side of the work. All right, and we're gonna slip our edge stitches as if to purl. And now we're going to pretend that our washcloth is done and we wanna cut our contrast color. And if you look, our edge is almost balanced out. And that's because even though we're making the elongated edges, it's very forgiving. Um, so what we're going to do this time, because we're gonna be working with our main color, um, instead of working an elongated stitch here, I'm going to work a normal stitch, and then we'll still work an elongated stitch on this side. And that way we'll have basically, um, for this little sample piece, two elongated stitches and one normal stitch, and uh, two elongated stitches and essentially one normal stitch down here at the bottom. So even though they won't look perfectly symmetrical if you're looking at it right here on the needles, once you um, wash it, it will balance out. I just wanted to show you with my sample here. Um, if you look really closely, they look like the edges are all very even and perfect. But if you look like right here, this one I actually did a triple wrap because I was trying something. And then I made up the extra space with this one by just doing a regular stitch. And unless you know what you're looking for, you're not going to notice because the whole washcloth balances out and um, I'll zoom out a little. Whoops. Um, it all balances out and you're really not going to see the difference. The washcloth itself lays flat, everything's good. So it's not something you need to worry about um, showing up really obviously or anything like that if you kind of have to fudge the edging a little bit that way. And that way you can kind of play around with the tensioning for your wraps too. You don't have to be afraid that you're gonna mess it up if it's not quite working out. Just add an extra wrap here and there if you need and see what works out for you. Okay, so we're gonna do a standard one. So just a single wrap and we're gonna knit across these guys. But we're actually going to start our bind off row. So I'm only gonna knit these three because to do an I-cord bind off, you knit all except for the last stitch in your edging or in your border stitches. Um, so since this is a four stitch I-cord edge, I'm gonna knit three stitches, and then I'm actually going to knit these two together. But since I wanna weave this in as I go, I'm going to do that so that it's wrapped over. and knit those two stitches together. So now I'm back to four stitches. And we will slide these all back. And now we're going oops, to knit the first three stitches again. So all the stitches except for the last edging stitch and then we will knit these two together. And then we're gonna slip those four stitches back. And we'll knit these four again. <laughs> and as you can tell, that's kind of the pattern. Excuse me, we're gonna knit these three again and then do our knit two together. Um, but every other knit two together, I'm wrapping the yarn around because that will um, weave in that little contrast color edging as we go. It looks a little weird right now. It will turn into I-cord and it will turn into uh, an actual woven in end there. 
just a little bit because we only have a few stitches. Let me know in the comments if this is a technique that you've done before, if you've seen a different method for an I-cord bind off. Um, this is really the only one that I've seen or that I know of. Um, but I'm always wanting to learn new techniques and new tricks. So if you have any tips or tricks for I-cord or for washcloths in general, um, let me know down in the comments and you know if you don't have any tips check the comments to see if anybody has left anything particularly useful to you. That's kind of the fun thing with knitting is we don't all knit the same but um, the beauty in that is there's so many knitters that there's bound to be somebody that knits similar to you so if the way that I'm doing things doesn't quite make sense um, if we leave comments about different tips and tricks and what's beneficial to each of us, you might unknowingly be benefiting somebody else that is reading through the comments and that connects with the way that you do things. And so that would be kind of fun if we could start up some conversations down there and help each other grow as crafters. We're almost done with this bind off. I know back when I first started knitting, I couldn't understand why people would waste their time making washcloths and boring things like that. <laughs> um, but as I've progressed over the years and as I've gotten more used to different types of projects, I really enjoy handmade washcloths. They are just more fun to use. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I spent time making them or if it's the materials or what the deal is. Um, I just generally like using them better. Also, you get to play with all the fun crochet cottons and there's some really cool colors and patternings and the dye style and everything. Um, so that's always kind of fun. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing that's kind of nice, if you've got little people and like little, little that are still getting their face wiped after they ate um, little people, the handmade washcloths, in my opinion, seem to be a lot softer than like a standard washcloth. And I don't know, my little boy at least really likes the hand knit washcloths and hand crocheted washcloths better than the regular washcloths. Um, he does not like getting his face wiped in general or his hands. He will just take the washcloth away from you and throw it on the ground if he gets the chance <laughs> or throw it at you, one of the two. Um, <laughs> but he seems less apt to doing that if it's a handmade washcloth. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just the colors because I've got some fun patterns and colors that I've made over the years or um, what the deal is, but <laughs> that seems to help at our house. Um, they also make really fun gifts. I know I've got uh, quite a few friends that really appreciate getting um, handmade washcloths and soaps and stuff like that. Oh, and let's see, what did I do? I just wanted to make sure here quick that I didn't. Okay, nope, we're good. So we will do this last one. And I think that contrast colors woven in enough. We're just going to leave it. Um, but now we have three stitches here, three stitches here. And if you're not a fan of grafting, sorry, <laughs> uh, but that's the nicest way to get a closed edging. Um, and you can see, you can kind of see that white through there. If you don't like that, you can use a different weave-in method where you just run it through the actual I-cord, like just through the center of the I-cord. Um, I get nervous doing that with washcloths because you use them a lot. And I don't know, mine get washed constantly. So I get nervous that it's not going to actually hold if I don't like do a really good weaving in. <laughs> 
Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're at with that. Use your own discretion on how much weaving you wanted to do. Uh, but we're going to graft this ending closed here. And in case you're not familiar, grafting is the same thing as Kitchener stitch. And you don't need a super long tail, but I don't want to run out. So I probably cut off more than I needed to, but that's okay. Um, and just to make things a little bit easier to see, I am going to quick snip that guy and this one. So now we only have one tail on our washcloth because the rest were woven in as we started off earlier. So we've got our yarn needle threaded. You always want to start your grafting with um, the yarn coming off the back needle generally, but since we just finished this stitch, it's coming off the front needle. So what we could do, we could one, rearrange the stitches, or two, we can kind of play around and see if we can make it work just like this. And I think that's what we're gonna try to do. So we've got it coming off the front needle instead of the back needle. So we're actually, going to do, we'll see if this works. For a regular graft, you do a knit stitch. Actually, you would start with, um, yeah, a knit stitch and then it's coming off the back needle. Now through the front needle, you do it like a purl stitch. And then on the back needle, you put it in like a purl stitch and slide it off. And then put your needle through the next stitch as if to knit. Pull that through and then you put it through the first stitch on the front needle as if to knit and slide it off and through the next stitch as if to purl and we're going to pull that shut and I'm just double checking I think that'll look okay I think that'll be a good joint um, and then we'll go let's see did as if to purl on the front, we've already done a knit on the back, so we're going to do a purl on the back and off, and then a knit through the next stitch and keep it on the needle, and then a knit through this stitch and off, and purl through the next stitch, and whoop, make sure your yarn stays where you want it to stay. <laughs> Um, let's see, and as if to purl, and off, and as if to knit, and off. And you'll see, because we have those elongated stitches on the edge there, it does take a little bit of kind of finagling it around. But you end up with a pretty seamless join there. And, you know, obviously if this was a bigger sample piece, you'd be able to see more. But I didn't want to make you wait for forever for me to get it all set and done and everything. Um, and right now I'm working with a new editing setup for my videos. Uh, if you haven't noticed in the last couple, it's been a little bit of a rough start with the new editor, and I do apologize for that. Um, but sometimes that's just, it's a learning process. <laughs> um, so hopefully this one, we will not cut off the ending. Let's see, I just wove right through the middle of the eye cord there. And... going to cut it and I know I just said that I didn't want to do this on a washcloth but I wanted to show you this technique and clearly this is not a real washcloth so I feel like I'm safe showing you <laughs> that on this little mini version but there is our 
little baby washcloth, like super baby washcloth. <laughs> I think it's like an inch and a half by like maybe three inches. <laughs> Uh, but now you kind of have an idea for all the different techniques for binding off, for creating applied eye cord, casting on, all the things. We even covered how to do just plain eye cord, not an eye cord edging. <laughs> you can convert it into an eye cord edging, but uh, that's in the first video and we go into more detail there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you got value from it and like these kinds of tutorials and would like some more, um, please leave a comment, like the video, subscribe, hit the notification, you know, all the things. Um, basically, I could really use your help getting the algorithm to push out my videos to more people so that I can make, so that it makes sense for me to take the time to keep making these tutorials. Um, I like making them, but it does take time out of my day. And so it's nice knowing if you guys are getting some value out of it and if it's worth me spending the time making them. If you have suggestions for how I can make them better, let me know. Um, but yeah, any help that you want to give the channel by commenting, sharing, whatever, <laughs> it would be greatly appreciated. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Again, if you want to make this yourself, visit yumiyarns.com. The pattern is also available on Ravelry and it's called the hashtag Cozy Blanket. But Clearly, it's a washcloth now, and I will link all the tutorials in the pattern pages. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you next Saturday. Happy knitting!